of the first women's bobsleigh competition of the season. Lying in third place after the first run and uh, counting her lucky stars, Lauren Alter with great woman Tamara Sayer. A big moment and a huge reaction in 50-50, just saving it somehow. And bringing yourself in with a 400s gap to the leader. 200s ahead of Nolta and 200s off the lead is fellow German Kim Kilicki. Annabelle Gallander joining her in the back of the sled. She had a little less of an adventurous run down. There's definitely a strong contender for medals, but it is Melanie Hassler and Nadia Pasternak of Switzerland who are our first heat leaders. Hassler too had a couple of little errors early on in the run and lost pace before the finish, but she has the advantage with just a couple of hundreds of seconds. So you ask, where on earth is the woman who has not been beaten on this track for 12 years, Kaylee Humphreys? Well, she lies in fourth place, only 19 hundreds away from the lead. And on this track, anything could happen. Yesterday's debut winner, Bianca Ribi in the monobob, lies in fifth ahead of Nikel Volt and Cynthia Appiah. And unfortunately, our rookies from the USA, Riley Compton and her break woman, Macy Tarleton, crashed early in the run and were just inches away from the finish line when the sled came to a halt, so they will not get a second go. Everybody else, though, limbering up and getting ready to go as the snow continues just to drift gently down from the clouds after a, a clear, crisp overnight. A little bit of snow in the air. Good news for skiers, not such great news for bobsledders. But uh, the ice is cold and fast and hard. And as ever here at the Whistler Sliding Centre, beautifully prepared. All the track workers and the uh, track cr crew and chief can take a, a well-earned bow. Uh, although no rest for the wicket, they will continue with their work throughout the entire season. Among them will be Canada's Chris Spring, uh, rehabbing his knee after surgery during the summer and uh, taking a year out before hopefully returning to the ice in competitive form uh, in the run-up to the next games in Milan Cortina. But he has just stepped into the back of the booth, fresh from being one of the forerunners uh, this weekend. So again, perfect knowledge of the track and of the conditions. Well, there's the start list. They go in reverse order of how they finish the first heat. Cynthia Appy will be first off, and Melanie Hasner will have the longest wait until her time is on the ice. So, Chris, good afternoon. Is it afternoon now? No, not really. Good morning. We start then with Cynthia Appiah, rookie Leah Walkenden behind her. And Cynthia having a little bit of a, a rocky first trip down, but plenty uh, of opportunity to improve on that. Yeah, what they did do really well was have a great start here at the, at the very top of the track, and we're going to see here another fast start time. 5.24, wow. Definitely a quick start, and they had the third fastest start of the first heat, and most likely mimicking that here in the second heat. And Cynthia's going to want to clean up her run a little bit, and it looks like she's already having a much better run than her first heat down the track. Critical to keep that start speed in the early few corners as the speed builds very quickly here. Yeah, and you see here through seven, a little bit of a lower line with pressure on the exit, but she handles it well, holding on to this speed that she's created at the top of the track. A little bit late into 11. We're going to see here a bit of a tap early on, but works hard. Gets the sled into back into the right position, exits that 50-50 curve without any problems. First port of call will be to try and overhaul Nikel Vogt, who was just 700 in front of a great exit out of the final corner, straight down the tubes, 53.59, and uh, just 200 shy of her first heat run of 53.57. So good consistency. Yeah, and I would say that the track has slowed down just a touch. You know, with that run, it was a lot better, a lot cleaner than her first run, and to be 200s back with a very similar start time. I was surprised with that. So I think the track has just slowed down a touch, but we're going to see definitely some quick sleds coming up here soon. We saw the air temperature hovering around zero, so that will, yeah, the, the track will just maybe start to frost up a fraction. Look at these. Oh, my God, they're so powerful at the start. <laughs> Big extension from those girls out the back of the sled, and then a huge load in, making sure that when we sit down, then we start to get calm, nice and calm in the sled to start driving those nice lines that we see down the track. 
Well, Cynthia likes so many athletes now coming into the front seat from being a push athlete, and that gives such a, a powerful starting combination. Nicole Vogt is another of those. She started briefly as a brake woman before converting to driving. Jasmine Jones joins her. Jasmine making her World Cup debut. A sprinter from Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Started in the America's Cup a couple of seasons ago. Raced with Christy Coplin and with Riley Compton. And then took a year away and came back to this World Cup crew. Yeah, so we're going to see here another good solid push start at the time at the top sorry and the snow beginning to fall a little bit heavier which is going to just hamper that start time a little bit as we see here six hundredths of a second slower than their first getaway well, we've got the four-man bobsleigh coming up this afternoon we'll be hoping that we're not in uh, heavy snow conditions because that really doesn't help anybody you see here the slide with nicole and jasmine they're a little bit behind here at the start and that's uh, attributing to this red numbers down the track right now. But good lines here as we see, and she's actually clawing back a little bit of that time from 1700s, now only 1400s. And let's see what she can do down here in this very technical part of the track. And again, similar mistake she had in the first run, but handles it very well. And we'll see what speed she can get out of this BMW slide at the bottom. Only 800s in it. <laughs> she was 700s in front. She's clipped the wall. She's not going to make it. She doesn't One make tenth it. tenth of a second. And great speed at the bottom there. Just runs out of track. And uh, that's a great learning experience for her. And I'm sure she's going to come back in many years to come and be conquering this Whistler sliding center track. Well, good start for Jasmine Jones to her World Cup career here. And of course, they head to USA in a week's time, where we'll be at Park City, Utah. Very different nature track to this, much more soft hands gliding track. Certainly not the drama that we see here so often. Yeah, and it's funny to see, I spoke about this yesterday, about the, the sound in the start house. You know, when we're at a very difficult track like here, or Lake Placid, or Altenburg there in East Germany, we have these... Uh, quiet quiet start houses and then we we get uh, we move to either eagles or park city or a track that's a little bit more generous for the pilots and uh, a lot more joking around and you see there all smiles here from these ladies as they move on to the next stop next week in park city utah well, Bianca Ribi, what a first day of World Cup racing she had yesterday. She was a hundredth off the lead of the monobob race after the first heat and claimed the gold medal when Lauren Alter crashed out on her second run. So a big day for her. Now with her new break woman, Neve Hockey, behind her, 24-year-old. This is in her second season and this is the World Cup debut for these duo. They won both North America's Cup races here a couple of weeks ago in the women's bob. Can they move up here as well? And improving on their first heat start time by three one hundredths of a second. You see that Bianca actually ran a little bit deeper there, and that's something that we do in the snow. You know, typically that slow that snow it slows us down at the top, and we run the same depth as what we would when there's no snow in the track, which is actually a little bit shorter. And so we usually take a, uh, one more cycle or a couple more steps if it's snowing to really try and get that sled accelerated at the start of the track. 1400s up, the gap is growing again now over Cynthia Appiah. And a little bit early under 12 here, but she works hard, gets off, and she's gonna increase this lead as we see to the bottom here. It was 1400s up. Now 3100s, high line in 16, letting that sled fly and crossing the finish line. 3400s with great top speed, 146.3 kilometers per hour. Yeah, just 90.9 miles an hour with no brakes, at least not when you're on the run. And, and that's why this track is such a challenge, because everything comes at you so damn fast. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see here, she is 3100 back from Kaylee. Uh, which is a little bit out of the medals, and Kaylee was in fourth place there with her break woman, Emily Renna. But she is wanting to move up here, Bianca, and that is a great run, hopefully moving her up the rankings. Well, whatever else happens today, she had a fantastic start to her World Cup career with victory in the monobob yesterday. So that just really marks her card for everybody. She's not just a newbie, she is a newbie to be contended with. So. Of course, she has the advantage of home ice here. She knows this track well, but so does this woman. And Kaylee Humphreys has not been beaten in a World Cup race since this day, the 26th of November, 2010.
on this track. 12 wow. years ago. And don't forget, that was just the first race back after she won the Olympic gold on this track. So imagine her break woman that day, Heather Hughes. Here we go, Olympic champion in front of me on the home track. Gold, gold, gold. They ended up in bronze. The race was won by Shauna Roebuck. But what about Emily Renner behind Kaylee Humphrey? So Emily making her debut from Rochester, New York. And a little bit of a slip there from Emily on the break woman handles, but she recovered very well and still a great start time 524 actually bettering her start from the first heat right kaylee's 1900s out of the lead do not count her out she can do almost anything in a sled so here we see 3600s up she's going to want to see that grow to at least half a second in order for her to have a chance of success of climbing the top of that podium today yeah she was 2900s ahead of bianca Rivi from the first he needs to double that Otherwise, she's kind of losing ground. Nice early entrance into 11. Gives her lots of time here. Gets on to 12. Nice run line through there. Not much steering in 13. Gives her excellent opportunity for a top speed here at the bottom of the track. 4,300s up. I said she's going to need at least half a second. 4,800s. Wow. Well, Super smooth. She makes it look so straightforward, doesn't she? I mean, just... That knowledge, that ability, that that muscle memory, all the all the other, you know, just she's just done it so often, so well. Yeah, and it's one of her huge strengths. And then add to that her ability as a push athlete as well. Mm. And it's well, it's one of the reasons, or the it's the reasons why she has been so competitive for so long. The consistency, and you see there a bit of a slip and a trip from Emily on the back, but recovers exceptionally well in order to post an even faster time than her first heat. And that's one of those issues with snow in the track. The spikes, you know, there are lots of them, but they're very short on the, on the running shoes. You can just get them clogged up a bit. And sometimes when you have a bit of a slip as you're pushing, something triggers in your mind. It's this fight or flight movement that happens and you're just like, oh, I better go, go, go. And there's sometimes where it actually helps you get to that faster start time. So here we are, the top three sleds. Mm -mm. Okay, so Kaylee Humphreys leads from Bianca Riebe and Cynthia Appiah, USA, Canada, Canada, but we've got two German sleds and a Swiss sled. So it's the clash of the Alpine Titans, the Germans and the Swiss versus the North Americans. First up, Lauren Alter with Tamara Sear. Lauren Alter, of course, our Olympic women's bobsleigh champion. Yeah, and she did have some difficulty at the bottom of the track on her first run. Still posted a great time. The 5-2-6 start. Not as quick of a getaway as her first heat, but still very competitive. You see that in her start velocity. Only the third fastest, but now back to being the quickest on the track with an 8 hundredths of a second lead. She was 15 hundredths ahead of Kaylee Humphreys in the first heat, so she's losing ground. The, the German sleds are extremely fast at the bottom, but she's late there. Yeah, with 15 hundredths up, you may see that stay the same at the next clock, maybe drop back. And, whoa. whoa, she's really high here. She's going to have a lot of trouble. A little bit of a touch. Oh, gets away with it. Wow. Man, that's, that was an even more dramatic rundown into 50-50 than her first heat where she nearly crashed it. So she drops behind. Kaylee Humphreys is in the medals here. And with her, her rookie break woman, Emily Renner. Well, Lauren Alter may yet take a medal here, but she will have to have a lot of thinking about that 10-11 crossover. Yeah, and this track, it rewards good driving. We see here the lines from Kaylee, nice and smooth, very controlled. And understandably with Laura, it is her first time Whoa. here at the track. And look at these, wow, look at these pictures. She's so late coming into this corner, works as hard as she possibly can, still gets that push away in 13. As we see here, just clipping the wall, and she has to work really hard on the exit here. As we see here, the sled doing as much as it can to stay off of its side and on all four runners. <laughs> Ready. Yeah. <laughs> He's happy they're down. <laughs> so is Tamara in the back there. I'm not sure if she ever raced here in skeleton. She may well have done, but uh, you know, there at least you're kind of the master of your own destiny. When you're in the back seat, you definitely ain't. Kaylee Humphreys leads, two to go.
Yet only covered by two hundredths of a second between first and second place yeah. here. And four hundredths between the top three after the first heat. So definitely a lot of movement can be happening here. And Kaylee's right there at the bottom with her break woman, hoping that she can climb another spot up towards that top step of the podium. Well, Kim Kalicki, like teammate Lauren Alter, had never raced here before they arrived a couple of weeks ago. So this is still very much a work in progress. But look at the way that they are targeting gold. 519, 200s quicker than their first start. Bit skiddy up there in two to three. Yeah, big start time and a little bit of a skid out of one and between two and three. And that's going to show here a little bit on the time. But with that start time, it's a huge advantage that she has. And she's probably going to be growing here at the next block. Exit of seven, 24 hundredths of a second up. Well, this is all piling the pressure on the final sled of Melanie Hassler. But again, she's a little high and late there. Does she get away with it? She does. Yeah, Kim's first run was very controlled, and you're seeing very similar lines again, and she's opening up that lead 3,600, and it's most likely going to, wow, with that speed to 41 hundredths of a second. Huge top speed, just like we saw in the first run, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on the pilot from Switzerland, Melanie Hasler, and her brakeman, Nadia Pasternak. So Kim Kilicki, Annabelle Gallander will take at least a silver medal ahead of Kaylee Humphreys and Emily Renner. Saw Kaylee saying goodbye from the leader's box. Rene Spies and Gert Leopold, their uh, conditioning trainer, look pretty happy with things at the top. There's Lauren Alter in the familiar pink. So we see this skid out of one. It's just because she's releasing that steer a little too early and losing that back end. That really hampers that start time. You do all this work to get a fast start time and then unfortunately lose a bit of that speed with a skid out of one. But she handled that track very well today, much better than she did yesterday in the mono bob, and she'll be leaving here really happy with her runs today. <laughs> so Annabelle, what was the start there? She's finally asked. Now then, not since Koenigsegg 2014, when Fabienne Meyer was European champion, has a Swiss driver won a Women's World Cup bobsled race. Melanie Hassler and Nadia Pasternak could do that today. Against yeah, them, a, a against them, start. Kim Kalicki, to her 17th race, she's had 14 World Cup medals from 16 starts, but these two looking for their first ever win together. 5.18 in the front, and wow, drops it, another 300, 5.15, huge start time, and a great exit of one, and that's gonna carry this speed, and that 200ths of a second lead that she had already opening up to seven 100ths of a second. All right, Melanie Hassler, it's in her hands here. She needs a clean exit from seven. Yeah, nice lines here through six, seven. Good height. Oh, a bit of a skid here. Oh, that's going to scrub lots of speed. That's a huge mistake that she's had here. 1,200s up. We're going to see that time get eaten up here. Only 500s. All right, it's all about the speed. What she got? Top speed from Kalicki at the bottom was 147.2. This is going to be close. She's behind. She will be in the medals, but only the fifth best speed. It's silver, and it is gold again for Kim Kalicki. Silver for Melanie Hassler, and bronze for Kaylee Humphreys. Yeah, it's such a great result here for Melanie and Nadia, and I'm sure they're going to be excited with this, but I know that she's going to be looking at those lines from up in uh, exit of seven there with that huge skid that really cost her the race here today. It is a great way to start their season. Yes. <laughs> that is their fourth World Cup medal together, their second silver medal, but there's the error creeping in early in the run. Yeah, and she takes this flop and the sled just goes into a bit of a pressure skid here because it hasn't released all the pressure by the exit and it wants to keep pushing around the corner. The rest of the run was pretty much textbook, just that one error and you can see how much time that will bleed. And especially when you're up against some great athletes here, great pilots, we have to we have to put down great runs in order to be on that top step of the podium. We saw yesterday so many sleds coming late off seven, but getting a little straightening tap in corner eight down into nine. She didn't get that, but they get another medal. And so too does Kim Kalicki. Kalicki adds another gold to her tally. And for her break woman, joining Kim Kalicki, Annabelle Gallander, her fifth World Cup start. This is her first World Cup win. 
So victory number four in the World Cup for Kim Kilicki to go with seven silvers and four bronze medals and two World Championship silvers, 17 World Cup races, 15 medals. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what uh, Annabelle is happier with, the start, I think, and then the medal that goes with it is, uh, is an added bonus. So there you go, in the end, it spread out a little in the second heat, and that is very much the nature of this track. If we go to Park City and 400s cover the top three, chances are it will be the same after two runs. But Kalicki the victor from Hassler, Humphreys on the podium, Lauren Alter in fourth ahead of Bianca Ribi, and Cynthia Appiah with Michelle Vogt bringing up the tail, uh, Nicole Vogt bringing up the tail of the field in seventh spot. Well, there are your happy winners. And Chris Spring, the foreman coming up this afternoon, is going to be a great way to finish off this weekend. Yeah, exactly. And with a little bit of the snow falling, it will be a bit slower at the top of the track. But we are going to see some high speeds today, just like we saw in the women's race. Some exciting action. So please come back, join us this afternoon for some four-man bobsled action. We'll be back then for Chris Spring and the IBSF TV crew. I'm Martin Haven saying thank you for joining us. We'll see you for the foreman to round out our Whistler weekend.